Hi, welcome back. And for, the, for those of you who have never been here before, I'm Dr. Rob Palumbo. I'm an orthopedic surgeon, specialized in sports medicine and arthroscopic uh, surgery. And I'm going over some of my internet questions uh, today. A um, lot of questions lately about hip pain. Uh, some very specific questions and some not so specific. Um, and there are so many things that hip pain can be caused by. Um, one of the um, things is, one of the first questions I would normally ask if somebody was complaining about hip pain is the, um, is it, where is the location? You know, is it in the front? Is it on the side? Is it in the back? Does it radiate? And all those kind of things uh, really give a good indication of where the pain may be coming from. Uh, typically in athletes we see uh, uh, two types of pain. Uh, one is uh, in the groin and one is on the side, occasionally in the back when there's some possibly some back issues or SI issues. But what I'm going to focus today is that groin pain that we used to call um, a groin pain pull uh, before we had MRIs and all the other diagnostic tools that we have and before we had a good understanding about it. Groin pain could be one of a, many things and uh, obviously uh, everything from something coming from the abdomen or from the pelvis to musculoskeletal and what I'm going to stick with today is more of the musculoskeletal type origin of the pains. Often a patient will come in and with a slow, insidious onset of, of groin pain and uh, worse with activities, uh, worse when they're uh, sitting down, um, and sometimes they feel it's popping or snapping. Sometimes the just the presence of that popping and snapping can be helpful. We see it a lot in gymnasts and a lot in dancers where they have a tendon problem that snaps from one side of their uh, hip to the other when they when they move their hip and we call that the medial snapping hip syndrome real I know real scientific but what it is is one particular muscle that we call the iliopsoas could actually get uh, inflamed and it could form a bursa around it and when somebody comes from the um, abducted and turned out position to the internal position to the uh, inward directed position, they'll feel a snap in the front of their hip and, and it will be a sharp pain. That classically um, could be treated with physical therapy, uh, stretching and uh, some modalities for help. Sometimes, however, you have the same type of pain but there's no clicking, no snapping. In certain athletes, hockey players, soccer players, people that go to extremes in their motion in their hip, also dancers, gymnasts, um, we have to worry more about what's going on in the ball and socket. And sometimes that could be early arthritis coming from the ball and socket, which is, again, arthritis in the hip is often often presents itself with groin pain. So <clears throat> if you have any problems going on inside the hip, whether you have a chondral injury, injury to the cartilage on the bone, or a labral tear, which is the lip around the socket, or some loose bodies, or some synovitis in that hip joint, it will usually present it as, as groin pain in the front. Um, then we have other true groin issues, true, uh, true muscle pulls, uh, the adductor, the, uh, the, uh, the tendon and muscle that brings the, uh, the hip closer to the center of the body from an outside straddle position inside is classically what we would say is a groin pull, that adductor strain. Now there's other strains too, there's the, there's the top of the quadriceps muscle, there's some other smaller muscles in that area too that could also be involved. So one of the things we have to do with uh, in our in when someone presents like that is really come up with a with a uh, criteria and a algorithm how we're going to kind of figure these things out. Obviously the first thing we have is our physical examination and people will um, react differently to different ways we'll move the hip and twist the hip. Also we have our regular x-rays which can be quite helpful in some cases. Uh, surprising how many people have early arthritis on their hip that would never know about it. But also certain shapes of the hip joint and certain shapes of the femur and the ball and socket joint could lead to some uh, differentiation of where the, uh, where the pain could be coming from. Ultimately, there are times that we have to go a little bit more advanced. We have to use a uh, what we call an MRI, or in, in more cases than not, in my practice, an MRI arthrogram. This is a uh, test that first you have to inject dye into the joint, and then um, and then 
uh, get the MRI afterwards and that dye goes through all the nooks and crannies within the hip and really brings out uh, some subtle differences that you won't see if there's no, flu if there's, uh, no fluid in the joint. Um, that's when we can see if there is findings consistent with a labral tear, or consistent with arthritis, or some other thing going on in the joint. We could also look at the tendons outside of the joint and get some uh, information from that. I will say, however, that in the case of, um, in the, case of the hip and, and uh, MRI arthrograms of the hip, um, there's a lot of false positives. Just like anything else, we're learning how hypersensitive the MRI of the hip can be. Um, and uh, if we were to take uh, about 100 people between 25 and 35 years old and without any hip problems and did an MRI arthrogram on their hip, probably upwards to 25 to 35 percent of the people would show some abnormalities of that of the labrum which the radiologists will often call a labral tear. Now that sets the orthopedist up uh, with problems sometimes because you know people will come in with their MRIs in hand saying I got a labral tear, I got a labral tear. But it's not the labral tear that's causing their pain and we have to differentiate that out. What I'll do sometimes is uh, I have the patient undergo a fluoroscopic guided cortisone injection into their hip. Uh, the reason why we do that is we want to make sure that the needle is in the hip joint itself and the medication goes in the hip joint. Now, if the pain goes away completely, even for a short period of time, I know what's going, whatever I'm finding on the MRI or whatever I think on the, um, uh, on the physical exam, if I'm thinking that it's coming from inside the joint, that gives me a pretty good idea that it is if they respond well to that shot. Sometimes that's all they need. Sometimes you have some inflammation that will go away. Other times they'll get no relief or minimal relief from that and then you gotta start thinking of other reasons to have this pain. Often it is one of those tendon problems that are going on and then we have to decide what's to do next. So not everybody that comes in with a labral tear on their MRI sheet will get an arthroscopy. Not everybody will have the same uh, treatment. Uh, and the thing about hip, uh, you know, the problems of the hip, they're very diverse and they, uh, a lot of symptoms kind of mimic each other. So it's really important to go to uh, your physician, go to an orthopedist that understands the hip joint. Um, um, many arth uh, arthroscopists and uh, sports medicine physicians will at this point. Um, and if you have any questions, go back to the website and go back to the internet and give us, a, give us a, uh, some more specific questions and I can answer them just like this. And hopefully by answering your questions, I'll give some more knowledge for anybody else that's out there. Have a great day.